Activision have a hell of a lot to answer for, because not only did terrible things happen to one of their employees, but they also withheld information uh, from the police. So that is very bad. Now, of course, this all uh, mostly came out during the DFEH's lawsuit against Activision Blizzard, where you know, there was the stories of Alex Afrasabi, but then there was also the story of um, the suicide that happened at a company retreat. Now, basically, to go through this, there was a holiday party where images of the female employees' uh, nether regions were passed around. So the DFEH suit said that this female employee had committed suicide on a business trip in a hotel. Now, this is one where her male supervisor had brought adult toys to. Now, Activision said this in their response, that they are sickened by the reprehensible conduct of the DFEH to drag into the complaint the tragic suicide of an employee whose passing has no bearing whatsoever on this case and with no regard for her grieving family. So today you're going to find out how... That statement is a big problem. Certainly. A big, big problem. Mm -hmm. Now, their overall response to the log suit was to call it distorted and, in many cases, false descriptions of Blizzard's past. We should note that this uh, story is Activision Publishing. We believe she was a, uh, was a finance manager. She was a finance manager, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is this type of irresponsible behavior from unaccountable state bureaucrats that are driving many of the state's best businesses out of California. So what we need to now do is go into this wrongful death claim that is uh, that's, that's being filed, and this is certainly not good news for Activision, and it is very very bad for um, well, for their PR. So the family are suing Activision Blizzard for their involvement in this wrongful death case. They're claiming that the sexual harassment that was enabled by the company was a significant factor in her death. Now, everything below here is according to the lawsuit, so we're you know, just going to go through this. Finance manager for Activision Blizzard since 2011, 32-year-old Carrie was in a sexual relationship with her supervisor, Greg. Now, he had joined in May 2016 and left a year later, and that was a month after Carrie's death. Now, the thing is that Activision Blizzard refused to hand over her company laptop and claimed that her phone had been wiped. And they also wouldn't give... Um, they wouldn't give any of the Greg-related stuff over either, right? So that's not particularly useful in the investigation of this death. Now, basically, she and Greg had spoken at the hotel in the morning in the lobby, and then he texted her, please don't do that, not tonight. Think about it and make your decision when your mind is clear. Half an hour later, she took her own life, right? Now, Greg did not tell the police that he was in a relationship with her, and he lied about the reason why he had a key to her room. Now, the parents said that they were unaware of any sexual harassment, and they claim that Activision supervisors knew or should have known of her harassment, but failed and refused to take immediate corrective action, and that it was a substantial part of her suicide. Now, the lawsuit is also saying that the Anaheim police failed to investigate this correctly. Uh, they didn't dust for prints, and they did not question Greg about that text message. Now, you have a suicide that happens 30 minutes after this text message lands. There's clearly a link, especially when the text message is literally saying, please don't do this. There's got to be something going on there. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing where this is the case where the idea that... Uh Activision Blizzard were refusing to hand over stuff, wiped her phone almost immediately, and, you know, seems to have just kind of let this go without any, without providing substantial assistance to the police or anything, and then having that initial response of, oh, this is, you know, the DFEH brought this in, there's nothing to do with the case. I think it's, it's like, because you can look at a lot of what happened to Activision Blizzard and think, well, like all of the, all of the, like, sexual harassment, and you can kind of, obviously there's people who can downplay it because you know it, whatever reason but it's just it's extremely serious in terms of how people actually experience their day-to-day -day lives and i think when it gets to the point where activision blizzard management are happy to cover up the fact that their employees have been in you know illicit well not illicit but you know sexual relationships with staff and this is the kind of outcome i think that's what i think we mean when we say 
Activision have a lot to answer for because this is clearly there's some culture here that went extremely, extremely wrong. Yeah. Now, Activision have responded to this. They just said that they were deeply saddened by her death and that she was a valued member of the company. As for the lawsuit, we will address the complaint through the legal process as appropriate and out of respect for the family. We have no further comment at this time. So obviously, they're playing it safe. Um, as far as I see this, though, it's pretty much without a shadow of a doubt that there is... Okay. Can we make an authoritative claim that these things are directly linked? With 100% surety, no. no. Um, but it very much does seem like there's a link. Yeah. And if there's a sexual relationship between these two, sex toys in that room, he texts her, 30 minutes later she's dead. That that was not investigated is insane. Yeah. Um, Anaheim police not following up on that. That's insane. Not dusting for prints. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, um, think about the, the holiday party where her photos were passed around. Given the, uh, you know, obviously this is, you know, amateur detective work, but you would immediately assume that considering they were in a relationship, the photos were his, which implies how were they passed around? Maybe not. Maybe, you know, some other source. But the fact that that's not investigated and the fact that they're, you know, allowed to continue this relationship to the point where all this has happened and then they're sent on a business trip together just shows that people uh, at the same level as Greg or above weren't paying attention. And the fact that they let him go quietly a month later is certainly shows that they were definitely... I mean, I think the, I think the wording of the lawsuit it calls this effectively a cover-up from Activision Blizzard. And I think that's the only really way to look at what they've done here. Yeah. Especially if those photos came from him. Yeah. Uh, now, I guess the, the time-wise, the link between this holiday mm -hmm. party and then this corporate trip, Yeah. we don't know. Yeah, don't know that. Okay, so we don't know that. But assuming those are... Yeah, assuming those are the same... I mean, it's... It, what... What went on? What led to that text message? That's that's just what I, I still cannot... It's what I cannot get past. Because, yeah. you know, the please don't do that. Mm -hmm. So, what what is the that? Is is it suicide? Um, you know, do, does she feel backed into a corner where she has no options at all? What's going on? The, the not tonight... Mm. That's also really strange. Yeah. Because if, let's just say, somebody had, you know, threatened suicide or, you know, there were red flags from a safety perspective, you know, that, that were there. Do you really say not tonight? That's uh, strange. Yeah. Well, t to me, that's so, that's the mark of someone either being extremely desperate and just saying the first thing they can actually type because yeah. it's kind of an, an emotional reaction. Or this, I... I don't see, okay, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know yeah. how he texts, but like the think about it and make your decision when your mind is clear. Mm. It could be something else, but... Mm. Like, th this just seems like cold and quite properly typed. I, yeah. I mean, I don't want to speculate too much, but it's just no matter what way you think about this text message, there's obviously a causal link. Mm. Um, and Activision must have known about this. That's why I get concerned about the fact that they wiped her phone immediately or at least claimed it was wiped and refused to hand over either of their laptops or Greg's phone when that seems to be like, that seems to be completely against everything I would expect in these cases where the only the only reason you wouldn't do that is clearly to hide something. So like, yeah, the question then is like, who got the phone? Yeah. Who wiped the phone? What is the, What does that process look like where this phone gets wiped? Yeah, as opposed to immediately hand it over to police for investigation stuff. Does it like how you, I guess this is the problem. I think we're, I think this is how the, all this problem kind of comes around is I imagine it was just whoever got the equipment brought it back to the tech team. The tech team probably didn't know or didn't pay any attention. It was just another phone in the pile and they got rid of it unless it was, you know, unless it, they lied about it being wiped, which I don't think you would particularly want to do in case you were found out. But it certainly sparks to either a cover up. Or a really cold and unfeeling company 
and that's I guess that's going to happen when you get to a certain size and you've well, dis- if, you've disseminated organizations. But if it's a cold company that just operates like that, yeah. then you know operating in that manner can be used by mid-level people yeah. to effectuate a cover-up. Yeah, for sure. Um, so ultimately here, the, the thing is, we don't know. That's why it's good that this is going through the courts yeah. because uh, there are, you know, parts of the legal process where, you know, people have got to give their testimony under oath. Just, you know, the discovery, we will find out things. Um, this will be reported on, so hopefully we will actually work out what happened here. But yeah, it's just an entirely insane situation. And that. You could certainly say it seems like Activision Blizzard may have covered things up. Yeah. uh, Is wild. And also, that the Anaheim police didn't do a good job is also quite bizarre, given that text message. Yep, it certainly leaves a... I don't get it. Yeah, it leaves a lot of questions unanswered, and I think it's... I mean, this is the problem of a company of that size and a company of that kind of ideal, where... You know, they say she was a valued member of the company, but how much of that is just platitudes in hindsight as opposed to... 100%. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the issue when you get to just... I guess it's cold corporatism at the end of the day, and that's the thing to keep in mind what these companies actually are when you think about them, when you, when you, you know... I don't want to say when you buy their products if to start a boycott or something like that, but it is it is a part of... Uh, it's part of existing and playing games and buying stuff is engaging with corporations as they're as they grow to these gargantuan sizes and stop feeling human. <sighs> yeah. I think we just need to wait until this goes through the courts and we find out, but hopefully we will find out that some sort of justice happens here because yeah. the whole thing feels wrong. Okay, right. That's it from us. Uh, we will see you again tomorrow. <laughs>